Hello everybody. Goodness me, I don't think we'll be back here again. But hey, what excitement we have. What joy, what festivities, wonderment. Anyway, I hope everyone's <laughs> all right. And uh, having an okay time given the current situation. So let's see if we can make it a little bit better. We're trying to make some awesome food. Um, thank you again for coming back. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, my little following of individuals and the tuning in and sending messages. I'm really, really grateful. So thank you very much. And um, Philan, good old Philan. See, Philan never leaves. He's he's about as consistent as my live is actually Philan. He's always on it. So love Philan. Um, so uh, before we get into too much talking, I think what we're going to do first is we need to get straight on and make this uh, bao bun dough. So, um, as I said earlier, hopefully you've got all your um, ingredients weighed out. So, what we're going to do first is in a bowl, um, just going to have um, flour, baking powder, salt and the sugar. We're just going to pop that into a bowl. Okay. And then, um, in a separate little bowl, I've got my sesame oil. I'm just going to get some, uh, some warm water. And if you don't have a set of scales that will um, that will measure, or a jug that will measure 75 millilitres for this, then what you can do is just uh, use a set of scales, and, uh, and they will do the same. Weigh weigh basically 75 grams of water. That's the same as uh, same as uh, millim millilitres into a. For the, on the scales. So basically what we're going to get here, in a bowl, a little bowl, we've got our sesame oil, or uh, we have just uh, half a teaspoon of sesame oil. I'm going to put 75 mils of lukewarm water, so it wants to be about blood temperature. Okay. And that's in the oil? Yeah, in the oil. Yeah, and just keep any excess water you've got left, because the thing is with, uh, with, with any kind of bread making, it's never an exact science, okay? And then I'm going to put my yeast in there, into that mixture, okay? And then if you've got a little whisk, uh, you just want to give that a light whisking, just so it starts sort of getting the yeast activated and so on. I'm going to use a little milk frother, okay? Um, the Crippen twins say hello. Oh my goodness, the Crippens are involved. Fantastic, hello Crippens. Okay, thank you so much. So your mum too. Oh my mother, oh my stress, mother, no 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 daring comments please. <laughs> uh, so in the big bowl, baking powder, salt, sugar, in another little bowl, lukewarm water, yeast, and the sesame oil. We're gonna put them in together. Okay, and then with a spoon we're just gonna gently mix them all together. And then we'll get our hand in there and we'll have to just give it a little bit of kneading. Okay, so with the spoon, we'll bring it all together. Okay, if you've done bread before, you kind of get like the, the basic sort of principle of bread making. Okay. Right. Could you repeat what you've done because Maddie's had some issues with their internet, I think. Okay, so in a in a in a big bowl, in a big mixing bowl, I put the flour. That's two hundred and twenty five grams of flour. Um, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Uh, half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, half a tablespoon of sugar, and I put that into a bowl. Then in another little bowl, we've got our uh, half a teaspoon of sesame oil. We have our yeast, which is half a teaspoon. Okay, and then 75 mils or 75 grams of lukewarm water. And then I just mix them all together to form a dough. Okay. You've had quite a few hellos. Um, William J. Ross says, hello, sir. Hey, Will. Lots of people saying, yay. Okay. So if you've done, um, if you've done any bread before, you, kind of, you might have a sort of uh, an understanding principle of making bread. So it's always really important to have the right amount of, of, of liquid. You know, what you don't want it to be is too dry. That's, that's the worst thing. Too dry means that there's not enough moisture for the dough, for the yeast to eat and keep nice and warm to help grow. Okay, and then we got there, and you just kind of got a little dough mix that's come together. Okay, so when you pinch it or squeeze it, it should just come away from the fingers. I just might need a little bit more flour, so we have a light dusting. 
Okay? And then once it's all come together, we're going to take it out. We're just going to knead it for a few minutes on the table. Okay? So you can knead it any way you want. If you want to knead it like that, you can knead it like that, but I tend to sort of knead it like so. Okay? If it's sticking to your hands a little bit, just put a little bit of flour onto the table, not too much, just a light dusting that will just hopefully come off the hands and then you can also shake your hands together like so okay and just take off any excess dough that's on your fingers so that's all all in there and we'll go back into the dough that's no problem at all okay you don't need to use a chopping board if you've got a clean work surface you can do that you can use it on there okay so um while we're kneading this so uh we've We've got a few things planned, obviously. I, I don't know when I'm going to be back to work. I don't think I'm going to be back to work any time soon. So I think we've still got a little bit of time we'll be able to spend together, spending, making some wicked things and some good things. I've got some plans for the next few days, the next few weeks, actually. And um, so hopefully be able to tune in and join in. Um, and if, like as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message, you know, and direct message me. It's no problem at all, okay? Really, really good. But so I thought I'd try something a little bit different with bow buns because they are really lovely. Really, such a not the simplest things to make, but just have so much flavour and something you can really make versatile and do in several different ways. But the name, um, but the bows are usually made from from flour and yeast, like we've done, and usually add baking powder as a raising agent as well. Primarily comes sort of from the north of China. And they can be filled with all sorts of things, you know, prawns or vegetables or whatever. And they're usually kind of done in different shapes as well. Okay. And, uh, but, but the steam buns um, are going to make, of course, and, and have such slight differences, you know, in, in them. And I like to put, obviously, a little bit of Japanese ingredients in there. That's why we're putting a little bit of miso in, into them as well. So, of course, once you've kneaded it for a few minutes, okay, it should start to feel quite smooth, okay, before it looked a little bit shaggy, okay, and now it's starting to look a little bit smoother. It's getting sticking a little bit to my hands. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more flour. I'll rub my hands together and take this excess dough. You'd be surprised how much is coming off my hands here, but that's fine. Okay, get all of that dough in, okay. And basically what you're doing here in the kneading process is you're activating the gluten in the flour, okay? And when you were wondering if it's ready, you can do a little test. So you take a little bit of the ball into the dough and you stretch it out. And this is called like the stained glass window effect. So I don't know if you can see, I'll put it up to the light, I want to put it up there. You see in the inside, there's these teeny little strands that's coming all the way through. That's the gluten that it's made. And that's what you need to make any bread. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna roll it into a little bowl if it's nice and smooth. Okay, we're gonna pop it into um, our bowl. And then we're just gonna get a little bit of clean film and cover it. And this is why I wanted to start this bit as quickly as possible. It does take, you need a little bit of proving time. Okay, another little, what you can do now guys, if you got it, um, you can use a tea towel and wrap it in a tea towel and you can put it in the airing cupboard or by your boiler, any warm place. And we're gonna leave it in somewhere warm. I have a fortune to have a little proving drawer, so I'm gonna put mine in my little proving drawer. And that needs to sort of double in size. It should take about, 15, 20, 25 minutes, double in size. Okay. So uh, that's, that's the sort of the toughest part of the, of, of, of the, of the mix of the recipe we're going to have done now so far. The Ollie Lowe says you look knackered after all that kneading. Yeah, shattered. <laughs> I think it's the talking as well. <laughs> um, and also Darren Wiseman says he'd like you to make some Jamaican food, please. Jamaican food. Do you know what? 
Maybe I'll give it a go, Mr. Wiseman. Maybe I'll give it a go. It's always fun having a little bit of variation. So yeah. If I periodically clap in the video, <laughs> don't be alarmed. It's only because I need to stop and start my video camera so that this syncs to help my brother out. So we're gonna move on to the filling. I just wanted to go through the steamer baskets. So I've got these steamer baskets. I've got a bigger one. If you're using a couple, that's fine. Um, the biggest thing that when I was um, told about them is you want them to fit into a saucepan and be quite snug and tight. Okay, so they fit inside. The other trick you can use is you can use a, fry, a frying pan. And I just put a little tin foil to protect it and I'm going to pop it in there. And that's going to protect it. You put water in the bottom and that allows steam to rise through. Okay, if some people might have like the several stacked ones, which is cool, but I don't have that, so we're going to go with those. So, we're going to move on to making the filling next. Your dad wants to know what happened to the one you made earlier. What, the... The dough? Oh, I haven't. Shh! <laughs> it's me! It's impatient. Exactly, very. So, for the mix, um, I'm going to be using pork mince for this. I mixed already some of my ingredients together because you know I'm impatient. Maybe have an hour before the live drops. So, it's my special little tool. So, I'm uh, I'm doubling my recipe because I've got some plans for it on another day. So, what we're going to do is, if you have a food processor, perfect. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. You can mix it by hand. Okay, it just means that you might need to grate your garlic and your ginger and chop your spring onions and mix the other little bits and bob. If you have a food processor, processor, perfect. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the pork mince and put it in there. And always remember to take that little bag out. Like I forgot once. Okay. And to the, uh, to the food processor, I've got my pork in there. I'm adding the, um, the liquids and the miso. So the liquids are the tablespoon of mirin, the egg yolk, the tablespoon of sake if you're using it, and the miso, okay? And that's all going in there, okay? What would you substitute for the vegetarian version? Um, I, I would like to use nice mushrooms, but we actually have thought about using pulses, like uh, chickpeas. Not particularly Japanese or Chinese as far as I'm aware, but have a, add that kind of substance to give it a bit of texture and a bit of thickness. So that's what you can use instead, okay? What about cauliflower and stuff like that? Yeah, you can use cauliflower. This is what we're gonna think we're gonna try out. It's using cauliflower and um, blending it in a machine and using that instead, that could work quite well. The next thing I'm gonna add is I'm gonna add the spring onions that I've just chopped, the garlic, which I've just chopped, and the ginger I've just chopped. Mandy says, can you go over everything you put in the processor again? Okay, so you want the 250 grams of uh, pork mince, or in your case, uh, you want um, one egg yolk, one tablespoon of mirin, one tablespoon of sake if you're using it, and the 30 grams of miso paste, the two spring onions, the clove of garlic, and the 20 grams of ginger, or 10 grams of ginger, whatever it is. 10 grams of fresh ginger. All into the fruit processor. Okay, and then I'm going to peel an apple. Okay, and this is just to give it a nice bit of uh, bit more sweetness as well. And sometimes miso can be a bit rich, but um, the pork just the apple just gives a, gives a nice little sweetness to it. It just cuts through uh, the miso quite well. Did you nearly forget it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get the staff nowadays. Always questioning. Philando question. That's a good point. Well done, Philan. Hey, you don't mind well done, Philan. <laughs> so with the with the apple, I'm just gonna grate it up. Okay, well you can chop it up, it doesn't really matter too much, um, because it's only a blend into the food processor so it's not Okay, and then that's all gonna go into the food processor as well. Apple in. Magic. Ben Philan says me through and through. Huh? Ben Philan says me through and through. Absolutely. 
Then in the last two ingredients to go in are your corn flour and your um, sugar. Okay. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in at this time as well. Okay. Now, the corn flour is an interesting little addition. About a teaspoon of salt, whatever you, whatever you like. The corn flour is quite interesting because that's gonna help bring it all together. Because if you don't have that, the moisture from all your liquids are gonna not bind the pork mix and the corn flour just brings it all together. Okay, then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it in my little machine here. Okay, so that's what it looks like, all in there, in a food processor. If you haven't got a food processor, you can put it all in a bowl, mix it with a spoon or by hand, get it as smooth as you can, okay? I wonder that big bowl back. Here it is. Okay. And I'm just gonna make a little bit of noise. at the end. Okay, everything's all incorporated. You know, don't matter if, if the spring onions and everything isn't completely broken down. That doesn't matter because it's just gonna give a bit more texture anyway. So don't worry too much. So it's just make sure it's all nicely mixed together. Okay, and that's, uh, that's the most important thing about it. Lovely, right. So, now we move on to our next uh, little bit. So what we're gonna do next is with the pork mats, yeah, we're going to divide it into however many number of balls we're going to make. So depending on how many you're feeding, you know, I think to be fair, two each is, a, is, a, is substantial, you know, but if you're doing more or if you're doubling the recipe, you know, three each as many you want to do, it's absolutely fine, you know. I think between six, six and eight, I think the recipe will make the gutter in, in the in the recipe. So I'm going to take half of this mix of mine. What do you do the other half then? Um, you can save it for another day and use it in make bad buns again, or you can make uh, little meatballs with it. You can do all sorts. There's a little dish that my brother sort of gave me an idea about, which I'm going to try later on. That sounds exciting. Yeah. So, now there is three of us, so I'm gonna make three. So what we're gonna do is basically, we're just gonna take the amount that we need and divide it between the number of people we need. So all I'm gonna do, is say for example, if you're making, if you've got three of you and you're making six balls and you mix away 600 grams, you just divide it by that total amount by six, and then you can evenly distribute it so that everything's nice and fair. 420 is my mix. 420 divided by six, please, Debbie, because your math's always good with your pattern. 420 divided by six. Oh, what am I doing? 70. 70? Yeah. 70. 70. 70. 70. It's oddly convenient. It's a nice number. It is. So just a little recap. With the mix, so all your ingredients in the for the meat filling in the food processor will mix by hand. Then you're basically going to take that, and divide it by how many people you're cooking for. You know, so if you're giving two each or three each, if it's all for you, then you can divide it into as many as you want. I don't suggest because I have a feeling Philan would do this. I do not suggest making one giant one because it will take forever to cook. And I don't really want to hear that you've been unwell. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is uh, safe enough. So, what I'm going to do is, do I say six to you? 70. Divide yeah, by six. Divide by six. six. six so, what I'm going to do is basically just divide. Look at, look at that. First scoop, 70 grams, 0.4. Winner. Well done. Ben says, too late. <laughs> Ben, mate, that will take about 45 to 50 minutes to cook. Just be careful. Unless you're cutting it, as like one giant meat bow, which would sound, does sound absolutely awesome, to be fair. So, 
So uh, I suppose there's one thing I should tell you about this. So my, my brother contacted me about maybe a month ago now. And he came to me and he goes, Simon, I've uh, started, the, I've joined a cult. And I was greatly concerned at first. And uh, to, my, uh, to my great joy, I discovered, or he told me, that he's basically, him and um, several other people from near there is where he lives and around the world have, um, have banded together on Zoom and have started these Zoom lessons cooking the stuff from my YouTube, which I thought was pretty awesome. So I felt compelled to join in. And it was great fun, actually. So every, every now and again, every couple of weeks, I join in and, uh, and, and give them a little bit of advice on my own recipes that I sometimes forget. <laughs> but it is great fun. <laughs> So, Maggie is asking if the soy sauce was part of the filling. It was, wasn't it? Soy sauce? Half a tablespoon of soy sauce. Yeah, that's in the filling. My recipe is different, and I have not put any in. But it's okay, because it will add to the excitement of the dish. You can always add, like, dip in the bad buns. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So... Here's a, little, uh, here's a little trick, so if you've got a team of you people, um, one's cooking and so on, here's a little trick that uh, is really, really important. So when I, um, when I got this steel basket from a um, shop, Chinese supermarket near me, a very nice gentleman gave me some great advice, and he said that what you want to do is when you first get them, is uh, you want to soak these for about a day in water, 20 minutes up to a day, keep them soaked in water and then let them dry um, just to allow it to, to keep protected, okay? But it's really important that you don't put the bowels straight onto this because it will stick, okay? Even though it is uh, it's made of bamboo. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can either line it with tin foil and make little holes in it or you can do thin slices or thin peelings of, uh, of carrot, okay, and layer it on or you can use spinach or you can use... Uh, um, maybe like uh, napa cabbage or any Chinese leaves. But what we're going to use is a bit of grease for paper. So what you want to do is we're going to make, in the chefing world, something called a cartouche. So what you want is, is roughly a square of parchment paper. Okay? Then you're going to take that square, okay, and fold it in half. Like so. And you're going to take that and fold it in half again. Okay. You do something like that. And then, you've got the point here. So where I folded it, you've got this little point here. And you want to fold this corner to like this. Okay. And then again. And then again. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to Basically put the point into the center of the bow, or the steaming basket, sorry. Okay. And to the edge, the steaming basket, mark it with your finger. And then with a pair of scissors or a knife, you want to cut that. I don't ever do it that many folds when I've made those. You can maybe do less, but I like to do it, so I'm going to do it. And then you open it up, and what you should have is a circle. If you haven't folded it twice, you'll only have half circle. <laughs> and then that goes in. And if you've got it right, it will just fit round into the steaming basket, okay? A couple of questions. Yeah, um, go. Will there be a problem if they haven't soaked the baskets? Like, is that Philan asking? No. That's Maddie. Uh, it's not. Um, just um, when you put the bowels in, make sure you grease through paper. Make it a little bit bigger so it comes up against the walls, okay? Um, and... So that way, if they touch, they won't stick to the greaseproof paper because it is designed to, to be able to come, things to come off easily. Um, just um, be careful when you go to steam again. And maybe after this, definitely try and soak it again. Uh, definitely try and soak it just to be on the safe side. So just make sure your parchment comes all the way up. Okay. With that, all you do, instead of it coming to the edge, take it to right outside the edge of the whole circumference of the steamer basket. And then that will fill up nicely, okay? The next problem is your brother's filling is a little wet. Add more corn flour. Because that's why the corn flour will help bind 
the uh, the ingredients together a bit easier. I mean, it is. It's not meant to be like almost like a burger mix. You know, it is meant to. Because yours is quite soft, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, mine's quite soft. So don't be alarmed. As long as it's not like dripping, you know, it's it's a nice consistency. That's that's what matters. So um, the next part. Now this is where we're going to be out of sync a bit, but it's fine because you need time for this. So. In true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> okay, and the reason I did this is because in case it takes longer, I want to be absolutely sure. But do not be alarmed, because you know how much I don't like waste. Um, what am I gonna do with that other bit of bow mix? Well, my wife, my mother-in-law, saw this great idea for uh, mincemeat bows. Sweet. Sweet mincemeat bows, so it does sound like I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm offending some great Chinese god here, but and I've got a great bao bun, I don't know, but I'm going to do it anyway. So basically we're just going to fill bao buns with mince meat and eat them like, a, like an Asian mince pie, I suppose. Is how you look Kim at Joy it. did them and she did like little penguin faces on them, so we're not doing that, no, unfortunately. No. So, you take the, uh, take the dough out of the bowl and it should have risen double in size, or it should take about 25 to 30 minutes, okay? And you're going to put it onto a, a greased flour bench. Okay. A little bit of flour on top. You're going to spread it out and you're going to roll it over itself like so. Okay. And you're just going to knock it back. Okay. Basically, you want to fold it and fold it a couple of times and, and get a nice sausage shape. Okay. Now, if you want to be really pedantic, really, really, really picky, everyone's nice and fair, you could weigh it and then divide it between the number of balls. But I'm not going to do that because um, I don't want to. So I've got six. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into half and each half into three. And they should be roughly the same sort of size. Okay. Good to me. And then when you take them, you're just going to take them and you're going to turn them inside out a couple of times, okay, and roll them into a little ball as best you can. We're going to flatten them down, and here's where the next bit of fun starts, okay. So we're going to need a, uh, a rolling pin. I'll tell you what, this this to be more complex than I thought, but oh well. So, I'm going to roll it out thin, try and keep it as round as possible, okay. Don't matter if it does get a little bit... Uh, misshapen, okay? What should happen, is only naturally, is it will start to shrink back. And that's good, that means the, the gluten in the flour is activated, and that's perfect, okay? Mandy's asking if they should wait for theirs to rise a bit. Yeah, I would, I would wait for yours a little bit, because the other, other than the filling them, it's a case of putting it in the steam bucket and making the side which is not going to take off at all. So, all I'm going to do here, is uh, I've got a little bowl of just cold water, okay? I'm gonna put the bow mix in the middle, okay? I'm gonna press it down slightly, okay? Okay, fingers, I'm just gonna wet the edges of the bow mix, like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up, pinch, 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 pinch all the way around. So there we are. Ollie says his fave Pixar short is the bow bun one. 
I remember <laughs> I remember the first time watching that um, in the cinema and then I was speaking to my pastry chef at the time about it and he said that I looked like that little guy that the bow comes out with. Which I had to say I quite agreed with. <laughs> I think I did have very similar thin thin rectangular glasses at the same time, so it's fine. Ben has had a bit of a happening. He made his bread flour, his bow bun with cold water. So he's starting again. Okay, Philan, you, you you can keep it. You can keep it. it, it just will take a little bit longer. But don't don't worry too much. Don't think, oh, I'll put hot water in it because you don't want to do that, it'll kill the yeast. Okay, so just, just do it's fine. But well done, mate. Starting again, honestly, it's like watching Master Professionals. Okay, I'm roll these out. Okay. If you can ever get hold of it, if you ever want to make these again, if you can get hold of proper bow bun flour, they're much nicer because they're... they're they're, they're much whiter and you get a much better pastry, a dough, sorry, with it. These are thinner um, dough than what we've done in the past. Yeah. I think probably because we allowed them to prove properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And when you put them into the steam basket, also give them a little bit of room because obviously they are going to grow, they are going to expand and you don't want them to stick together in the, uh, in the basket. Okay. I'm going to add the uh, next one, so let's go. William Ross is asking, what do you do with the steamer again? Well, when you first get it, um, so when you first get it, you just need to uh, soak it for about 20 minutes in cold water. Okay, that way it won't hopefully prevent it from warping or bending when it, uh, when it cooks. Okay, I assume that's what he means by that. And, and then to cooking it, you... So cooking it, I will, I'll come to. So what we're going to do, basically, you're going to boil a kettle. Uh, if you're using a saucepan and it fits in, you want to fill it about halfway up with, uh, with water. And we can get it onto the stove. I'm using a frying pan. So I'm going to fill it up to, again, about a third full with uh, water. And then I'll start the cooking. Maybe um, he's talking about the lining as well. You've lined it. Ah, uh, yes. Possibly the lining. Uh, so you want to take a bit of greaseproof paper, a square of greaseproof paper. And then you want to uh, cut it into half, go put it in half, sorry. Fold it in half and then fold it in half again so you've got a square. And then you want to fold the point and then you want to check the point in the middle here and to the end of your steamer basket and cut it so you get a nice circle. If you want to just put a square one, you can do. But I, I, I can't help it, I just have to do a round one because that's what I do. It's a round thing. It is. Okay. So, um... I'm going to put, put a pan of a kettle of water on for your bow buns when they're ready to be cooked. People probably won't be at this point though yet, no. will they? I'm so hungry. Oh, I know. It's shocking. Um, Maddie said that she remember watching that um, bow short and being very, very concerned that the bun was going to be eaten. Yeah, that was, I think, the entire audience just kind of had that bit. Oh my goodness, camera was in my Yeah, I was stressed. <laughs> Make sure as well, when you've made the buns, that you, you pinch and there's no air. have air escape when you won't cook it. So you need to keep it nice and tight so it wasn't happening. The moisture inside will steam out. It will steam from the inside and cook it thoroughly. Okay. 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 So I'm on my last one here. Quite high. And the same with your 
sauce because what you don't want it to do is boil dry. So why you've got to steam them and just put it in the air. So the saucepans, when you're ready to cook them, half fill with the uh, with water. You don't want it to touch the bottom of the basket though. No, not really. That's why I want it to be Okay. Okay. So that's my six little bowels. They're ready to go. So I'm going to put them in the lid on there. I'm going to keep it on the side. I'm going to turn this on. Get that nice and hot. Okay. If you've got time, we usually leave it, don't we, to prove again yeah. for 15 minutes. Yeah, you can do. Uh, I'm not going to. Just for time. speed here. A little cooling down, and then we're ready for the next spot of fun. So these bowels, depending on the thickness, hopefully if you've got about the same sort of thickness as I've made, um, should be should take about 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, and we'll be putting a Google, trusty Google Mini on, giving my timings. So if you hear that suddenly kick off, then because my bowels are nearly ready. I made a. A bit more washing up than normal this time around, but so I'm very sorry. <laughs> I tell you what, this is a lesson in keeping clean when you're working as well. Oh, though. absolutely. It does make a difference. Got I'm not going to wash up on camera. That's <laughs> something I just refuse to do. So, um, for the side dish, um, I'm using spinach, uh, cashew nuts, uh, sesame oil and uh, sesame seeds, I believe it was as well. So this is gonna be a rock, quite a quick side dish that we're gonna do, we're gonna to add to uh, later. So with the uh, water, as soon as that comes to the boil, your bowels, they're nice and hot. I'm gonna move over to my other flame in a minute and I'll start cooking them. You want to get that nice, nice and boiling before you put the steamer on, so that it starts getting all the heat in there straight away, and it cooks really, really well, nice and evenly, and that's perfect. Okay, for the side dish, it's quite a simple little side dish. We're going to take spinach, we're going to wilt it down in a wok, and we're going to put some cashew nuts, sesame seeds, cooking a bit of sesame oil, a little bit of salt, and that's uh, and that's perfect. So yeah, excellent. I hope you guys have been able to keep up all right. I've obviously, when the live's finished, I'll gladly answer any questions you have. If you're fortunate enough to have my number, you can give me a call. Also, you'll put the up straight away when you do the video up. Yeah, the video on, on, the, on the Instagram live will go straight up. The YouTube will take a little while. So as soon as it comes to boil, I'm going to put my uh, basket in. Get that cooking. Okay, I'm just going to move that over there to a different burner. Okay, and that will cook nicely there. And as long as there's steam coming out of it, that's what matters. Okay, so um, I think what we're going to do now as well is oh, hey Google, put a timer on for 12 minutes. Okay, 12 minutes, starting now. Just the right uh, little number that one there. That little number there. Right. So you'll see almost straight away. The steam's already coming off. Don't open great. it though, generally. Yeah, keep it closed. Well, I'm just kind of showing. I knew it only just started. So, um, for the side dish, like I said, we're going to just do some wilted spinach, okay? And put that in a wok. Um, but we're going to toast the cashew nuts first in a little bit of oil. Okay, so I'm just going to slowly get this on. Okay, um, and take an opportunity to sort of speak about. Um, next week. So, if you guys remember, I did a, a voting on what people wanted to do next, and I think you guys have eventually, well, mainly, voted for the tempura. So, the other option, if you remember it, it was going to be a, a black cod ramen. So, that's what we're going to do next week. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to probably post um, a sequence of pictures and videos on my highlights in the middle of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, on how to make uh, the, the stock 
Obviously the ingredients will go up again as usual on Monday, so don't worry about that. Give you plenty of time to get things. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, uh, to DM me. That's absolutely fine. Okay. If you don't like cod, you can use salmon. If you don't want to use fish, um, you can do the same thing. Maybe we'll use um, uh, chicken fillets, something like that, if you want to use chicken. But I think cod would be stunning. Obviously, if you're vegetarian, we'll substitute it with something else. Um, I haven't decided what yet. We'll figure something out. Probably no, tofu. Uh, probably, probably tofu. <laughs> tofu mushrooms. Those classic numbers. Because they work so well, you know. It's just such a nice filling. They lend themselves well to the cuisine, don't they? Yeah, and they, they... Really, they really do. So, and, it, and it's nice to have. So, while we're getting... Uh, while we're getting ourselves geared up. Okay, so... Nice plates. Yeah. Not to try, I suppose. So what we're going to do first is, um, for the veggies of the side dish, I'm going to put some uh, cashew nuts in the bowl. In the wok. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, normal oil. Okay, we're just going to gently toast these off. Okay, I'm also going to add some sesame seeds. Okay. Listen to that. You can see them as well. I only cleaned this cooker the other day. <laughs> okay, and that's just, I want them to just sort of get that flavour in there, get that really nice flavour, really work. Okay. okay, so we're kind of getting a little golden brown kind of colour on these. Okay, and we're going to take them out. There's a few left in there. Yeah, it's alright. Okay, you don't want to add too much spinach at a time. You want to add it, wilt it a little bit. And then you can add a little bit more. Have you chopped your nuts? Maddie wants to know. You, you can keep them whole, it will give them a nice texture to keep them whole. But um, if you want to chop them, you can. Mine work pre chopped. Okay. Now, just to remember that spinach tastes of next to nothing, to make sure that with this, nice bit of salt in there. Okay. Once it's just wilted, I'm going to take it out. Okay. So like I said, I don't want to cook too much at once. So I want to cook it in batches. Okay. So I'm going to add a bit more of that. And then what I'll do is I'll add sesame oil and everything back in with the with the, the wok and the spinach. Because I haven't completely cooked it. Some of it's still a bit raw. Some of it's cooked. So I'll add that. Next bit in. So you don't want it soggy because there's like you know when you get like piles of spinach and it's just... yeah you don't want that you just want to just cook it you always add a little bit more uh, oil so it fries a little bit obviously you can season it again as you add more of the spinach. Standing here with a pink bowl. <laughs> you would. Well, I have to the look. bowl is older than me. I don't think it is. Yeah, I think it is, but I've noticed the bowl has been around for as long as I can remember. Yeah, but it doesn't mean it's as old as you are. Well, it's old enough. 
Um, we'll have to have a look on like TK Maxx and see if they've got any Japanese bowls. You know, like the cat bowls I got. Last little bit of spinach. Hopefully by now, guys, your bowel bunge mix should be good. Unless you're filan. Um, it will take a little bit longer. Poor filan, He does. He's a good guy. He tries. Does very well, actually. We're proud of you. Yeah, very proud of you, filan. Even when you are having a go at women on the road, and it's your fault. <laughs> what? You got really grumpy with some woman that was pulling out with him out of this road uh, today, and uh, probably hailed some uh, some profanity or some description, I'm sure. Simon. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, and then felt really bad because he realised he was actually indicating. Well. Wow. And so he, she was in the right. Mm. Bottom Maggie says you need some Hello Kitty bowls. Oh. Good time, thank you. Okay. But we did see some Hello Kitty kitchen utensils in is it Ichiba in Westfields when we could go. Yeah. Um, I wanted them. Simon said no. So um, what I've done now is I've just put a little bit of sesame oil in the uh, in the pan, and I'm just adding the spinach back in. Okay. You'll see that you do always get a little bit of water out. Try not to add that in. I know it's easy. Easier said than done. Uh, ben Flan says he was in the right until he wasn't. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, spoke like a true man. Okay. And Maddie says, Simon, how could you develop the Hello Kitty cooking utensils? Hello Kitty's not my jam. <laughs> Gudetama is my, bad, is my jam. Or. Getting really finicky, it's Bad Bats Maru. He's win. Okay? Then I'm going to add uh, the toasted sesame seeds and the cashews to the spinach. Guess who that was? Ollie Lowe. Oh. Ollie Lowe. <laughs> See, it's why I like Ollie. He agrees with me, like about the trampoline. The land's got one we could buy. Really? I'm not buying it. Oh. It was still a bear. That's his dog, not your bear. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's the little spinach side dish. We'll put Smells that lovely. Bowl. It actually came out quite well. Okay. Right. Almost, almost ready to play. Ollie says, get her a trampoline, bro. Oh, shut up, Ollie. You buy her a trampoline. You can put it away when she can't be bothered. I'm not having a domestic. So let's have a look at these bow buns. Um, and I move it to the bigger flame. Okay. So we're... See, they've already doubled and it's changed size already, which is great. Still plenty of steam in it. Hey, Google, how long left on the timer? Okay, perfect. Two minutes, that's fantastic. So we're nearly ready. Do you think it'll need a bit longer than two minutes, that, or...? No. no Don't do that. That was 13 minutes. Okay. That's fine. So, what I'm going to do... A little bit of spinach. Like I said, trying to get any excess juice. I'm just going to put that onto the bowl. Onto the plate, even. Okay. I'll give you a little brief rundown of everything. So hopefully by now your, your, your mix should be all good for the filling. And you're, um, you're starting to fill in the bowels. So remember to cut them evenly. So you've got the amount of fillings, the amount of uh, dough mix. And you cut the doughs nice and evenly as best you can.
you know, this is probably the first time I've ever used spinach and that it's actually not just wilted down to nothing. And that's yeah, it's quite like a, a lot, isn't like it? Like a substantial vegetable. Because usually, but then I, we did use 500 grams, so that's it's a lot, actually. <laughs> Do you think as well it's because you haven't wilted it down massively? It's been, it's yeah. quite... Yeah, yeah. Steamer goes. Okay. Cloth. I'm gonna grab the steamer basket. It's really important as well when you're washing them, don't use any kind of um, cleaning uh, stuff. Don't use any fairy liquid or anything like that because uh, you'll 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 ruin it. You don't want that to happen. If you've covered it nicely, you can just scrape it with just a little bit of uh, warm water. Uh, and a spoon of some description and just leave it to, to dry and then just leave it once you've let it dry put it away okay we'll take the bowels out how do you tell they're cooked Sam? well if you poke it yeah it won't be soft and soggy they'll be the mix will be really firm okay but these for you guys 12 to 15 minutes they'll be if you're worried As long as there's resistance when you pinch the pork meat. If you're really worried, if you're really worried, cut them in half. Cut it open. You can always put them back in the steam. Okay. This is more in the middle. Good to go. Um, your mum says there's lots of potassium. <laughs> so yeah, so here we are guys. Uh, miso and apple pork steamed buns uh, with a sesame and cashew spinach side. I hope yours come out right and you're really pleased with them and they taste delicious as they do. Thank you Gary and thank you again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It's great. You guys are wonderful. Um, again, tune in next week with Black Hot Rock. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to bang. Um, and feel free if you want to, anything to, you kind of want to see what to, to try out or do, then DM me. And, uh, I was thinking about running a competition. Maybe if I get to 800 likes, um, random winner I might get a free, free get a private Zoom masterclass with me. Maybe something dangerous. Cool. Alright then guys, well look, thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next week again, Saturday, 5 p.m. Not that it doesn't fill up the days of all my Anyway, but that's cool. So thank you very much. See you guys next week. Take care, bye-bye, thank you again. Woo!